started this video showing you track mode. You have seen many images with, you know, uh, whether it be Mortal Kombat collection, Zelda collection, or like a Midway uh, collection. They're really, really cool, but that's typically seen in a track mode. And something that's really cool about this new version 5 by David Marty Motion Blue Image is you can now do collections in Emulation Station. And for those of you who have been following my channel for a while, you know I'm a big fan of Emulation Station because it's so fast, so easy, changes are easy to be made. I think it's more user friendly. It has many, many advantages that I like very, very much. So in today's video, we're gonna go over Motion Blue, show you some advanced features, show you how to set up collections, as well as some other visual things you could do to Motion Blue very, 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 very easily. Anybody could do this, whether you're a beginner or you've been doing this for a while, I think you're gonna find this video interesting. So to get started, just some really quick visual things about Motion Blue that many people might not appreciate is that there's Pixel Desktop and Kodi right on the front menu. If you were to download a brand new version of RetroPie, you're not going to have these on your homepage. You'll have something called Ports over here, and you'll have to go into Ports to get to your Kodi and your desktop. But how nice is it to be on the main menu? I think that's very cool. It's much easier to get to, and you know exactly where you're going. Especially if you're using your Raspberry Pi as a media player, it's very, 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 very nice. Um, a couple other things just to talk about the looks of it. I'm going to go into Super Nintendo here. And this is the standard look. As you see here, you got the video preview. In the upper left corner, you have the video snap. Now, first off, organization. Uh, a lot of you have collections with thousands and thousands and thousands of games and I really think this is one of the biggest selling points of Motion Blue is there's so many built-in features to help you find your favorite games. Uh, the first one being the collections which I'm going to get to momentarily which is you can make collections of your games so it's not just system specific you actually have a collection. But on top of that, you have something called favorites. So let's go ahead and show you how to add favorites. It's very, 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 very easy. You couldn't add favorites in Emulation Station before this easily, and now you can do it. What I did is I just pressed A really quick. Once you launch again, game, press uh, B again. And once you press uh, B, go ahead and go to user menu here and tag as favorite. And now I'm adding Killer Instinct as one of my favorites. And go ahead and go through all the games you want on your favorites list. And now if there's specific games you just want really and then go back. And then I can either launch the game if I want to play it or I can go ahead and exit. But now I've already added Killer Instinct. Let's say I also want to add Final Fantasy 3 as well. Again, I enter really quick. Press my B button. Press B again. Okay, see, I didn't press it fast enough and it launched the game, so I just exited, start select. I'm gonna try it again, see if I can hit this button. Okay, I got it that time. Got into the menu here, and user menu, tag as favorite. So now I'm tagging this one as well. So, so far we've tagged Killer Instinct, and we've tagged Final Fantasy III. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit. I'm not gonna launch this game once this is completed. And you just have to go through each game you want. And depending on how many favorites you want, it might take more time than others. Now, if I go back here and I go to favorites, you'll see I only have Mortal Kombat 2 because that was a test I did earlier. You do need to restart Emulation Station before those will show up. So go ahead and tag all the games first, then restart, and you'll see your new favorites. We're going to show you that in a second, but I still want to show you how cool this is. Second thing you do is you press select on your controller, this might seem very typical to most people, but this one has the surprise me button built in and it'll surprise you. It'll just pick a random game, just totally random. Um, another thing, let's go back to Super Nintendo here. So you have the surprise me. You can jump to any letter you want this way. So if I want to go to N and DAGM, for example, that's on all emulation station. But then the sort by, you can sort by the file names, by ratings, by times you've played these games, by the last played game, by the number of players you can play. So whether it's a first player or second player game, uh, the release date, all that stuff you can sort through by here. Really, really cool. So we're going to go ahead and sort through file name. All right, some other cool things. You have the scraper if you want to scrape artwork. You have advanced sound settings here. All sorts of really cool stuff you could do with the OMX video player. UI settings. 
So you have a screensaver. How long do you want to wait till your, your pie goes into screensaver? What kind of screensaver do you want? Do you want a dim screen? Do you want it to go all the way black? Do you want it to play a random video? Dim is usually the, the standard that you're going to have on default, but you can change that. Uh, you can change between Hursty Blue and Motion Blue. Those are the two main ones. But you can also install third-party themes. There's lots out there. There's steampunk things. There's classic Nintendo themes. All really, really great. Another quick thing I want to show you is transitions are typically on fade, where it fades in, but you could do slide as well. So as you see here, I can now slide. It's sliding between the consoles instead of a fade from one to the other. If I don't want to fade, I can also do the simple slide or instant. Instant, there is no effect. It's just as fast as humanly possible. Look how quick that is between the, between the systems right? I get to Super Nintendo super fast. Okay. I also switched to Motion Blue here on accident. We want Hursty Blue. Okay. So this is Hursty Blue on instant now. Okay. See how fast it is? It still kind of fades a little bit, but it's pretty instant. So there's a lot of cool different... Um, settings you could do as far as what i like i like the fade I'm, i mean i like the fade if i'm you know showing off to people and i like the hursty blue better but i actually like the motion blue better for the when you go back here i like the motion blue what it looks like here better is my personal preference i just like a really basic blue but i mean they're both really cool so go back to what it should look like on yours uh, the other thing is the game list view. I'll show you that in just a second. Let's go back to the default here. This is how it should look by default when you get Motion Blue version 5. And uh, let's stay on Super Nintendo. I want to show you that um, what it looks like if you were to show just like a basic. So basic is no video snaps, just games. So it's a really fast way to get through your games. Kind of boring. So you can do that. Uh, you can also do a detail, which is going to show you box art. So you get box art. It's very just a basic, basic if you don't want videos. Uh, but most of you are going to want the video or automatic. Automatic will, I, I don't know how this is set up, but I imagine it just goes by whether you have video snaps installed or not. If you have video snaps, it'll go directly to video. Or you can just manually set video, which is typically what it should be manually set to, which is it'll show videos just like this. Earthbound, Earthworm Gym, so videos. Okay, so those are just some of the things you could do in the visual UI settings. Uh, there's also a lot of help screens on here. So for example, when I set my screensaver to video, random video, you'll notice that when I press back, I get this little warning mes message. There's all sorts of little help boxes built into Motion Blue to help you along your way. That's so cool. A little small detail that most people won't notice, but it's a nice detail. Um, but I don't want the random video, I just want to dim. So there we go. Um, other settings, this is all pretty standard. You can show your frame rate, which is really cool. You can set your VRAM limit, which is really cool. Um, a lot of settings that are in there. Uh, configure input and quit is a standard for all things. All right. So that is Motion Blue. Look how visually intense it is. It's great. All these little details. Now we get into the collections, which I wanted to bring up. And this is really cool. So I already mentioned this in my previous video, but uh, you have a really easy access to GPIO setups. You have really easy access. Oh, see, I have this one on. Um, this is why you probably want D automatic. Because like for this one, you see I had the gray screen because I was on video. So automatic is good because it sets it to the automatic settings. Okay, so GPIO shutdown. Easy, easy way to add a, uh, a shutoff switch to your Pi. The script is already on here. You just hook up your GPIO uh, shutdown button and you run the script. It should set it up for you. The background music, I showed you how to set that up in my previous video from two days ago. Check that video out. Um, and then the, really one, the one I want to show you today is the collections menu. So what we're going to do is we're going to click into here. You can also switch into a track mode as well. We haven't talked about a track mode at all. This comes pre-installed with tra a track mode as well. So super cool, super cool. But here are the collections. And today I wanted to do the Mario collection, right? Let's just have one spot where we have our NES and our SNES Marios all in one. So what this does is once you, if you already have the, you, what, the first thing you need to do is go back to my previous video and install all the games you want. Whether you want Mario games, 
whether you want Mortal Kombat games, you do need to have the games pre-loaded, the backups on your image. I already have NES and SNES Mario games installed on this image. So at this point, I click 14, enter, because that's for the Mario collection. This is going to take a little bit of time. It's, now it's just kind of getting everything, and I want to go ahead and add or update the collection. I don't need to remove, this is where you would remove it if you want to get rid of one after you create one as well. But since I haven't added the Mario yet, I want to add. And then the next screen is going to ask you whether you're using, which kind of MAME you're using. Because there's four different, there's three different MAME folders. So depending on what kind of MAME you're using, that'll, um, that'll change. So at this next screen here, I'm going to say no MAME Libretro, which is six. But if you have MAME games, you might have to do three, four, or five, but we're not doing MAME. We're doing SNES and NES. So if you're doing consoles, you're just going to hit six there. And this whole thing's going to update really quick. And once it's all done updating, it should shoot us back out to the RetroPie setup menu that we started at, where the GPIO script was and the audio settings and the Bluetooth. At that point, we're just going to hit start, go down to quit, and go ahead and restart emulation station and all these updates should have then taken place. All right, quit, restart emulation station. Okay, we've now rebooted, remember, we did two things. We added the collection Mario, boom, there it is. Mario collection, 11 games. And there we go. We got our Mario's Missing, Mario's Time Machine. I don't have the right video snaps for the NES. And then we have Super Mario All-Stars, Super Mario All-Stars plus Super Mario World. Super Mario Bros. The Original, Super Mario Kart, and Super Mario RPG. These were all the Mario games that I had on my, my image before I ran that script, and now I have my own Mario collection. You could do this with Mortal Kombat collections, Zelda collections, Castlevania collections. There's all sorts of possibilities. And again, this is an emulation station, not a track mode. So it's much quicker, much easier to filter through. And it has all those filters and search functions built in. So it's a really, really clean system. The other thing we did before we restarted was we added things to our favorites. So you'll notice that here in favorites, we should have two games. Remember, we added Killer Instinct and we added... Um, Final Fantasy, and we had Mortal Kombat on there before. So there you go, Mortal Kombat stayed, and we added Killer Instinct and Final Fantasy 3. So there you go, those are ways to add favorites. I showed you, and it's super simple now, as I showed you earlier in the video, and we added collections. Not only that, we saw all the search functions and all the different visual things we could do stock. Not to mention all the add-ons and extra themes you can install on top of this as well. This is so, 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 so cool. I really want to make this video because I don't think David Marty did a good enough job promoting his, his, his image. I mean, I, he probably is a very humble person. So he needs somebody else to come out there and let you guys know how cool these little things are and how great it makes the experience. And it just makes it to that next level. And that's why I'm so excited about this and I've been making these videos is because I know the hard work he puts in and I know why he's doing it and he has the kind of mindset to improve your whole experience. So I hope this helped you out. This should improve your gaming experience. I'm really excited about what you're going to be able to do with all these capabilities and how easy it is. It's so easy. You don't need to know programming. Somebody who's never touched a Raspberry Pi 3 before can install this image, get all their backups on there, and put it and and make it their own very, 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 very easily. And so I'm just really excited about that, and I hope you are too. Give this video a little thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Smash that like button. Let's just terrorize that smash button. And we'll see you guys on the next one.